Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, August 19th, 2024. Since we'll have covered the week of August the 12th through the 18th of 2024. Actually, it was more like the 13th through the 18th of 2024 because I didn't get to record last week's trophy update until Monday. But that is A-OK -okay because there wasn't a ton of progress made overall this week, only a couple of games. So the first game worked on this week was the PS5 version of Toy Story 2. So I already did the PS4 version. It was pretty quick and easy overall. Did it over the course of two streams. And the PS5 version is equally as quick and easy, except it was a little bit faster this time because I already knew what to do. So the Platinum Trophy is pretty straightforward. Basically, the game is divided into 15 total levels. Five of them are just area boss fights, and the other ten are actual open world levels, each of which contains five Pizza Planet tokens for you to find. You do not have to find all of them, you only have to find a total of 40 throughout the game instead of all 50, which definitely makes it just a little bit easier. Though, with the rewind feature, you don't have to worry too much, because that's going to make things significantly easier no matter what. Because while the game itself is pretty easy, some of the controls and the camera and some of the platforming and stuff have very much not aged well. So because of that, you might find yourself on the receiving end of several very bad falls down giant skyscrapers or construction zones or whatever you want to call them. So having the rewind feature there is going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. So in terms of the trophies... Basically, each level requires you to find five of a certain collectible type. In this case, it was Bo Peep's Sheep. They usually require you to do some kind of racing mission. They usually have some kind of mini boss. And then, like, two other miscellaneous trophies that are maybe location-based or just other interaction-based trophies. So, in the case of the very first level, you have to find and return the five sheep to Bo Peep. You have to win the race, and you have to defeat the mini-boss. Second level, you have to find and return the five troops to Sarge. You have to win the race, and you have to defeat the boss of the area. And then on level three, you simply have to defeat the boss. So that's how a lot of the levels are. Some of them are a little bit different, like level four here. Yes, you have to do the rescue five characters and bring them back to a certain person trophy. You also have to defeat the boss, but you also have to do a miscellaneous trophy this time for creating three batches of paint instead of something like a racing mission, which I don't think this one actually has a racing mission. It's ten. Well, I mean, it kind of is because it's time based, but it's like you have to just jump around and collect five items quickly. So then you get to the fifth mission. This one's a little bit different. You have to collect one of the area specific tokens. So this one, you have to ride a balloon to get to it. But you also have a miscellaneous trophy for defeating the boss of the area in a very specific way. Spin attacks only is not difficult. The only thing is you can't get to the clown top boss until you get the grapple hook ability, which is in either level 10 or 11. I think it's in level 10. So until you get that, you can't actually do this trophy, so you have to come back to this level later on. This is the boss of level 6. Then we go to level 7, so you have one location-specific token, one racing token, and one boss token. This one's pretty easy because if you ever accidentally touch the green goo, you can just use your rewind feature and have no problems. Level 8, you have to find and return the five aliens. You have to win the racing mission and defeat the boss, so pretty straightforward there. Defeat the boss of level 9, then you get into level 10. So this is the one where you get the grappling hook. You have to get all the way up the elevator and then solve a puzzle to reactivate the elevators themselves so you can use them to scale further up through the building. You also have to win the racing mission and defeat the boss fight. Then on level 11, you have to do the 5 creature return trophy, which is pretty typical. You have to do this one, which is basically just... There's going to be like five targets scattered throughout the level that you have to hit very quickly. Or not even targets, you just have to run into the objects. They're like... I don't think they're wrenches this time. I don't remember exactly what they were. I think they're just horseshoes and you just have to run into all five of them and run back to the horse within like a 45 second time limit. It's pretty easy. Then we get to probably the most annoying trophy in the game. You have to defeat the Gunslinger, which is the boss of this particular level using only the charged laser. The problem is that if he hits you, it's going to disrupt your charge ability, and if that happens, you're just going to have to recharge and try again. He takes quite a few hits to kill, and then it's also possible that you will accidentally shoot him with the non-charged laser while you're trying to charge it up. 
So this one was quite annoying. This was definitely the most annoying overall trophy in the game, but it's still not too difficult thanks to the rewind feature and the fact that you can have plenty of lives because this game operates on the life system, but also you have a life bar and it's the battery meter and whenever that depletes, you lose a life and then you have up to nine lives at a given time. Then you have the boss of level 12, so it's just another boss fight. This one takes a little while from what I remember, but it's still fairly easy. Then you get to level 13, so you have to scale to the top of the Broken Plane. That's a location exploration-based token. You have to win this challenge, which is collecting five items in a short period of time. Basically the racing mission for this level. And then you have to defeat the boss of the level. Then you get to level 14. You simply have to solve a single puzzle to make the helicopter land for a token. And then defeat the boss of the area, so you don't actually have to complete all the ones here. Again, you only have to find 40 of the 50 tokens, so you can focus on doing the easier ones throughout the earlier levels of the game and then just skip some of the later tougher ones especially on this level and then you just have to defeat the final boss which is the previous three bosses combined for some reason i don't know why they couldn't have done something a little more creative but it's just the last three bosses combined as long as you have quite a few lives you can easily kill them if you need to farm lives you can go back to the very first level of the game grab two or three lives then quit the level and then go back in until you get up to nine lives it's very simple now we have a few miscellaneous trophies that are level specific. You have to get into the cement. This is on the second level of the game. Just let yourself sink into the cement and you will get this trophy. It's on the race course. Then this is on the fifth level of the game, the alleyway. You basically just have to jump on the four lily pads. You're allowed to fall off between them. You just have to touch all four of them in a single playthrough of the level. Then this one is during the 8th level of the game, I believe it is. You have to, there's a token that's going to be inside of a claw machine. You just have to miss it three times, which might happen naturally if you don't get the controls. If not, just let yourself miss it three times until this trophy unlocks. Then you have to speak with Rex, the dinosaur, in each of the open world levels. So you have to speak to him a grand total of 10 times. And then finally, you have to have 9 li lives at once, which is done pretty easily just by farming them in the very first level. If you don't get this trophy naturally, but thanks to the rewind feature, you probably won't be dying a whole lot. So yeah, pretty fun game overall. Glad to have the PS5 version done, so now both versions of that one are done. I'll do Toy Story 3 at some point in the future. And now we get into the big, big boy game of the week, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War for the PS4. So this is on the higher end of the Call of Duty difficulty spectrum because of a few specific trophies. Most of the Platinum is not overwhelmingly difficult or time consuming, but there's a handful of really brutal trophies that we'll get to here in a minute. So you have five trophies related to the Dead Ops Arcade mode. This one is 100% luck based. I'm still working on it right now. I might have it by the time this video goes up, but we'll have to see. This one, you just have to fully explore a deadly dungeon, which you can do the first time you enter the wilds area after the end of the fourth wave of zombies. Then this one, you're going to get it around the same time if you know about the deadly dungeon. If you don't know about the deadly dungeon, then you probably won't get both of these on the same run. But for just escaping the wild, you just have to get to the exit of the area. Whereas for this one, you have to fully explore the secret dungeon area of the wilds area. Then for this one, you're going to get this one naturally while playing through the game because you're going to have to go through the Room of Fate to get to the final boss fight. So this was one of the two super, super brutal trophies in the game. Defeating the Mama Back, which is the final boss of this, is very, very difficult to do normally. But thankfully, it's actually been made a lot easier over time. So initially, you had to do this in traditional Dead Ops Arcade. You could do it with up to four people, thankfully. But surviving all 64 waves and defeating the boss in a group of four was going to take several hours and was very easy to just accidentally screw up at the very end. But thankfully, they added in two additional things that make the game significantly easier. One of those is first-person mode. Now, some people were telling me that first-person mode was not recommended because it was harder. I don't agree with that at all. First-person mode was significantly easier than third-person top-down view. But along with that, you also have the advanced start feature, which allows you to basically get a checkpoint every four waves that you survive. So like when I was originally doing this on stream, I only got to about wave 16 or so and then just called it quits because I was getting so annoyed by the game. Then on my next run, I did the first person advanced start mode and I got all the way to like level 48 without any major issues. And then I just 
sort of brute force my way up to level 56, then quit for the night. And then on my very next run, I defeated the final boss. The final boss fight is pretty challenging because the Mama Back has a lot of health. But overall, as long as you use that sort of, I mean, I don't want to call it a rewind feature, that whatever you want to call it, advanced start feature, as long as you use that, you should be good to go. It's really not that bad with it. Nowhere near as bad as it was when the game first released. I can't imagine trying to do this without first person and advanced start. It would have been absolutely horrible. Body Shield five times is our first campaign trophy. You might get this one naturally. If not, I'm sure you can farm it pretty easily. So as always, you have to complete the campaign on Veteran. I'm not sure what realism difficulty is this time around, but for the most part, Veteran is not very hard. There's been one really brutal section, and I'll get to that in a second, but other than that, Veteran has been pretty straightforward in this game. So you have to just complete all of the missions on any difficulty, but you're going to have to complete them all on Veteran anyway for the Platinum Trophy. So let's see, I still have two missions left to do. I haven't gone to these last two missions just yet. Echoes of a Cold War is the only one that was really problematic on Veteran because of the very end of the level so far. Now, I haven't done Final Countdown or Ashes to Ashes yet, but as far as I know, this one was by far the hardest level in the game on Veteran because at the very end, you get on this little, not even elevator, just basically a platform getting lifted up by a helicopter and enemies attack you from every direction all at once. So I was on that section for probably a good half hour on Veteran just because I kept dying from just, you know, stupid crap that probably shouldn't be in the game. It was a very clearly untested area of the game, but thankfully I was able to knock it out after like half an hour or so, and that is the hardest part of the game done on Veteran. So a few more trophies just for beating the game on Veteran. Then this is on the end of the line mission specifically, kill 25 enemies with the AC-130 at the end. This one should be pretty easy. This one you will probably get by accident while working on this, but if you don't get it on Veteran, you can always just load it up on Recruit and get it on that run. I don't think this trophy unlocks until you actually finish the mission, though. Then this one is the, I mean, I call it the Squid Game mission. It's really not, but it's like a Soviet training facility. You basically just have to shoot 15 of the many metal targets during the little training portion area. I mean, not really a training portion. It's an enemy training area. Then five kills with each of these four classifications of weapon. You should get this one naturally while playing through the game and through cleanup. This one requires you to do a bunch of stuff on break on through. I'm going to need to look at a video guide for this one because I'm not entirely sure exactly how this one's going to work. 200 kills with the AR in the campaign is pretty self-explanatory and pretty straightforward. This one should come naturally while going for everything else. If not, it would be very easy to grind. This one I'll have to go back and do. It shouldn't be too hard, but I might just have to look up a video of exactly where to do it. This one, I misread the trophy and thought you were supposed to go through the door, but apparently you're not supposed to go through the door, so that's how you would unlock this one. Probably not anything too difficult. I might just have to look at a video of it. This one, I didn't even know about this trophy, so I'm going to have to go back and try this one again on Recruit. That'll make it much easier. And then this level I haven't even done yet, so that's like the final level of the game. Then we get into the main game Zombies trophies. I don't really know anything about this game mode, but I do know that for the most part these trophies aren't particularly hard. I think this is the Easter egg for it, but it's not anywhere near as hard as like earlier Treyarch Easter eggs. So for the most part, I don't think it's anything too terribly difficult. And then we get to the actual multiplayer trophies. So the multiplayer trophies, it's not that most of them are overly difficult. It's just one in particular is very, very problematic. 200 eliminations, this one's going to come naturally to anyone that's playing the multiplayer. This is very straightforward. Win 50 matches is easy enough. It just might take some time depending on how good you and your teammates are. Then the 50 kills with lethal score streaks is pretty self-explanatory. Any lethal kill streak will count because it's not kill streaks, it's score streaks. So you'll end up getting score streaks throughout the game as long as you are scoring enough points throughout it. Then this trophy, the 100 kills as the driver, pilot, or passenger, this one actually counts with the RCXD which is one of the score streaks, so I'm just combining those two trophies together. It's nothing difficult, it's just quite grindy and time-consuming because the multiplayer is completely full of hackers. I've already had to report several people for hacking, it's not like Treyarch's going to do anything. But there was this dude that was so blatantly hacking in one of my last few matches of Sunday night. The dude had a sniper rifle and he was just 
basically not even aiming in your direction, but then he would just pull up the scope. It would auto snap to your head and instantly kill you. And he was getting like 70, 80 kills in a game on Nuketown. It was so clearly hacked, but obviously Treyarch's probably not going to do anything about it. Just, I don't know if it's because it allows for PC players to be in the same lobbies or not, but whatever it is, there are a ton of hackers in this game. It's quite frankly pathetic that your life is so sad and pathetic that you spend your time hacking a five or four year old Call of Duty game. I mean, it's probably something that Adam would do in cells like him, probably find some kind of joy in this. It's not fun, but at least these trophies are not particularly difficult, aside from this one right here. So squad-wide medals can only be done by killing the final surviving member of a squad in the fire team game mode. Why they decided this had to be fire team specific just makes no sense to me because the fire team game mode has kind of been dead the last couple of years, so it's only possible to get this one pretty much through either a lot of luck or boosting. But the problem is the game mode requires 32 people to even start up, which is absolutely absurd. And then even once you get into the game, there's no guarantee you're going to be in the same lobby as everyone else. And there's no guarantee you're going to be able to meet up somewhere to be able to get the fire team, uh, squad white medals, whatever you want to call them. It is just a mess of a trophy that should not have been there, or at least should not have been this strict. Five squad wipes, maybe I could understand. Three I could understand. One I could understand. But ten is just way, way too much. And one of the bigger parts of this trophy that is a major problem with it is just no one plays the game mode outside of like Friday night and Saturdays. And maybe a little bit on Sundays. And that's literally the only time you can even get into a lobby. Now, I have pulled off two squad white medals so far. I'm in a boosting group, but they were completely uncoordinated. And people were just being overall uncooperative. So I was able to get two squad wipes just by playing normally, which is good. But I still have eight more to go. And I'm just not looking forward to this trophy. It's just so random. It's so just poorly designed as a trophy that clearly no one over at Treyarch actually playtested this or thought this was a good idea. They just put it into the game to be funny because they thought it was going to be a nice troll for people trying to get the Platinum Trophy. The good thing is that whenever I go and do the PS5 version of the game, I only have to get one more to auto-pop it, thank God, so it's not going to be anywhere near as bad. So then there's also this game mode, the Onslaught game mode. I don't really know anything about this. I haven't tried it out yet. But as far as I know, the guide says it's like a 4 out of 10 in 10 hours. So I don't think it's going to be too bad. So let's go ahead and sync up our trophies. So with that level 877, 17%, 28,905 total trophies, 831 platinums, 5,554 golds, 7,739 silvers, 14,781 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. Obviously, it's to continue working on Cold War. I might be playing it a lot on, like, Saturday and Saturday night, maybe even Friday night, so I don't know exactly how that's going to affect, you know, streaming schedule and everything, so I guess we will have to see. Otherwise, the next Fallout lore video, the script is recorded, so I just need to record the Fallout gameplay for the background or just pull it from my... Uh, most recent playthrough of the game or something. So once I do that, I will be able to get that video out pretty soon. Then it'll be the Dead Rising 2, or no, not the Dead Rising 2 video, the Modern Warfare 3 trophy video. That one's about a quarter of the way done, actually. So progress is coming along reasonably well on that. And then otherwise, it's really just working on Cold War and whatever else I feel like working on this week. I don't really know exactly what the schedule is going to look like, what I'm going to be playing Partially, it's going to come down to what old, you know, PS1, PS2, PSP games get trophy support because if Realville Off the Rails randomly finally gets its trophy support, I'll be playing that, of course. Same with LEGO Star Wars 2. But I guess we'll have to see about both of those and just see what happens. So otherwise, look for more like Call of Duty Cold War for trophy progress, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to stream. It might be another like pick a platinum type of stream or something like that. I also have Resident Evil 4's PS4 downloaded, or PS4 version downloaded, so I can start working on that at some point. So, again, we will have to see. So, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't done so already. Let me know down in the comments what you guys have been working on this past week, and I will see y'all back here later this week for some more content.